we're about uh, an hour into the debate. Now, once we begin, you can't have 535 people in the same room long because of COVID. So uh, the Senate went off to do their debate. We only had 11 Democrats on the floor. The remaining Democrats who were going to speak were put up in the balcony, about 20 of us, I think. And uh, the first hint that things had gotten bad was uh, Capitol Police came in and took leadership of both parties off the floor. Appreciate this. The order of succession, very close in proximity, number two, number three, and number four. Vice President was there. Speaker of the House, President Pro Tem. If you're going to have a coup, that was the place to do it. So they're whisked off the floor. Uh, a, another Democrat comes to the podium. So, strangely, they seem to continue the debate. And then there's a pause when we are told that there has been a breach. The protesters were at the statutory hall, which is t- about 10 feet from the House floor. All right. Uh, then moments later, you hear shouts, uh, uh, an explosion, it sound like a gunshot, but I think it was a tear gas canister. Uh, so there are tear gas masks under our desk, under our chairs, and uh, we're told to get them out. Then they start uh, moving us around. The floor is evacuated, but us in the balcony, we're surrounded for some reason. We can't get out. So the Capitol Police are trying to figure out how to, so, so so odd to think about it, trying to figure out how to put us so we're in the safest spot possible with as much cover as possible out of line of shot. This is the house. This is the people's house. And uh, it's clear that we've lost it. Uh, control has been ceded for the first time to an opposing force since 1812. We end up in the far corner, uh, away from where the president comes in for the State of the Union, taking whatever cover we have. And and I'm struck again. I'm looking down at the makeshift barricade, uh, guns drawn, and my my hand is on the shoulder of an officer, and she's got her gun drawn. And at that point, I think they said, we got to make a break for it. So uh, they, they have us go out. Uh, and down some stairs very quickly into some corridors in this sort of labyrinth uh, over to uh, another house building. And uh, it turned out it was the Ways and Means Committee meeting, a uh, big room. Uh, I would guess 60 or 70 members were there at that point. And we were there till eight o'clock when we went back, uh, you know, to continue the process wait for it, a peaceful transfer of power. A little anger uh, that I saw what the president said that morning, right? He said, uh, if you fight like you have to, if you don't fight like hell, you won't have a country anymore. He invited 30,000 people and many of them of a mob mentality into the people's house to do harm. this was a coup. This is an insurrection. This was a threat to our very fabric of our democracy <clears throat> on a bipartisan basis. The, those words have been re- That's what I was thinking. <clears throat> I was worried uh, about people worrying. I was surrounded by members who were calling their families to calm them down. I would say the members behaved very well. They were calm. They were courageous. Uh, and part of that, we were calling our families and saying, it's okay, it's okay. Um, some lighthearted joking, uh, dark humor, trying to keep people calm, uh, making fun of the fact that they don't know how to put on a gas mask. Uh, the fact that we had, um, I was just you know, trying to figure out what we needed to do to, uh, to stay safe country's going to be okay. It's just going to take all of us of, of, of good mind and heart to work together. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get home and see my family, my dogs. Uh, again, uh, I want to walk after this, there's work to do today, tomorrow, but at least some of this weekend, I want to Diagostino's pizza and football. 
Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.